Hello everybody, Rusted Ground here, welcome back to Dragon Age Origins. So, Red Cliff Village, that's what I said uh, when at the end of the previous episode. So, we're gonna go there with... Uh, I'm actually gonna change it up a little bit. And we're going to, instead of taking uh, Liliana with us, we're gonna take Morrigan, Wynn, and Alistair. I think this is a pretty yes. powerful, pretty powerful party. We're gonna do like that and see... See how this goes. Uh, yeah, let's go. Red Cliff Village. Oh, this is closed. Oh, okay, okay. So see, so I can't even go to the Red Cliff Castle. I need to go to the village first. Uh, right. Let's do this. Let's see how. Okay. What do we have here? Denerim. I bring word, sire. There are demands from the Banorn that you step down from the Regency. They are said to be gathering their forces, as are your allies. It appears it will be civil war after all, despite the Darkspawn. Pity. I also have an interesting report. There seem to be Grey Wardens who survived Ostagar. How, I don't know. But they will act against you. I have arranged for a, a solution, a with sol your leave. Solution. The Antivan Crows send their regards. Who's this guy? An assassin. Against Grey Wardens, we will need the very best. <laughs> <laughs> and the most expensive. Okay. Just get it done. Whoa. So now we have an assassin on our tails, basically. An elf. An elf assassin. Okie dokie. Zevran Arai. Wait a second. What? Loghain Mactir during the battle. Okay. He then returned to Denerim and declared himself the regent. Yes. His actions sparked a civil war. Loghain supporters found themselves fighting their neighbors who blamed Loghain for the death of the ring as well as those who simply wished to take advantage of the power vacuum. Right, and here we go. Zevran uh, Arainai. Arainai, I think it's called. The Crows send their regards. Between the Tevinter Imperium, Ravain and the Free Merchants sits the nation of Antiva. Although it possesses few resources for its own, Antiva's location makes it a center for trade in the north and the capital, Antiva City, is the wealthiest in the world. Antiva has virtually no army. The monarchy is too weak to support one. Most Antivans would be hard-pressed even to name the current king as the true power lies in the hands of a dozen merchant princes, each with a personal army and each locked in a constant struggle for power against all the others anyone would think that anyone would think then that antiva would be a ripe target for invasion by one of her neighbors but even the kunari leave antiva alone for one good reason the house of crows the most efficient most feared and most expensive guild of assassins in the world calls antiva their home and their reputation alone defends the borders jesus that's great so we have these guys on our tails now Right, party approval. Yeah, we got that last episode. Cool. Alright. Behia Joam, whoever this is, and Shady Thugs. Right. Wait a second, what? Level up here for Morrigan. Look at her uh, portrait now. It's cool. Right, so magic it is, right? Let me have a look here really quickly. So she. Primal. Primal, right? Yeah, Primal, I think it is. Shock, the caster's hands erupt with a cone of lightning damaging all targets in the area. What else does she have? She, she only does Primal. Oh, she, she has this as well. Mind Blast, Force Field. Ooh, this is cool. So, magic, basically. Magic, magic all the way. Magic. Magic all the way. Cool. Right, so, let's go. Magic. One, two, three. Screw it. Let's go like that. Full on magic. And then... What? She can transform into a bear. Nah, I don't think so. 
I think we're going to let me see here horror sleep requires 30 magic we're not gonna go with that death magic while active the caster draws in nearby entropy energy draining residual life force from any dead enemy nearby to heal the caster whoa this sounds good force field the caster erects a telekinetic barrier around the target who becomes completely immune to damage for the duration of the spell but cannot move friendly fire is possible Right, but I think the crushing prison, man. The caster encloses the target in a collapse uh, in a collapsing cage of telekin. Crushing prison seems very, very good. Yeah, this seems this one sounds very, very good to have. Cone of cold. The caster's hands erupt with a cone of frost, freezing targets solid unless they pass a physical resistance check and slowing their movement otherwise. Targets frozen solid by the cone of cold can be shattered with a critical hit. Friendly fire possible. Shit. This one sounds very good as well. Caster's hands erupt with a cone of lightning, damaging the targets in an area. My god. I, 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 I don't even know what to get for her. <sighs> I wanna, I wanna start working on affliction hex. I wanna start working on her. I think I'm gonna go start working on getting to crushing prison because 30 magic is not that far off. I mean, we only need one more level and we're gonna have 30 magic, but we won't have, we won't have crushing prison. And I think crushing prison is pretty damn powerful. So I'm gonna go with force field here, like this, and then like so. And if I look at her tactics for a second, activate frost weapons. I'm actually going to remove this from your list. Okay. Surrounded by at least two enemies, mind blast. Yeah, that's good. So, right, self health less than 90. Okay, so let's do something else here. Let's go with one second. What else do you have here? Usability, Drain, Life, Disorient, Vulnerability Hex. We already have Vulnerability Hex on Morrigan, if I remember correctly. So, Force Field. I'm actually going to use Force Field. Um, enemy, any... Just one second. Right. Um... If if any ally, if any ally's health is under 25%, she is going to use force field. So, let me just have a look here again. Yeah. Force field. The caster erects a telekinetic barrier around the target who becomes completely immune to damage. For the duration of the spell, but cannot move. Friendly fire possible. Completely. Uh, yes. I think it's best because then we have Win here who can actually do something about uh, saving that person. So let's go. Hello ah, there. A fellow traveler of the fair lands. Are you a seeker, perchance? My packs are light, but I have a tome. Of strange origin. The Deus V Eternus, rumored to be the last message to a sinful world from the Maker himself. Oh, hello. I have five copies. Wait a second. Wait. Ooh, you're a forger and a liar. Did you sell a few copies in the Circle uh, Tower? Ooh. Okay, I think we're gonna fight this guy. I have uh, no oh, idea yes, what you you're talking about, and uh, neither do these large men carrying swords. Oh, yeah, um, shh! Sh wait a second, jeepers, my friend. Okay, so... Goddamn, son. Okay, we're gonna be attacking here. Right. And... Right. She's casting Disorient. Oh my god. 
you're not doing so good. Why are you attacking? I don't know why she's attacking, uh, but you need to get a health poultice in you. No, 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 no. That, I don't know what the hell happened there. But you clearly need to get a health poultice as well. The hell? Who the hell? Oh, they had a mage there. Wipe them out. I didn't even see that mage, man. Oh my god, I didn't even see that mage. Okay, come on. Anything else around here? Very well. <sighs> come on, guys, get up. As you say. Is there one more? I don't. Oh, there isn't. <sighs> right? Yeah, there isn't. Be more careful okay, next time. health poultice, cameo cowl, cunning and health regeneration in combat. Okay, what else do we have here? Right, okay, so let me see here. Ready. Let's go with injury, lesser injury kit, lesser injury kit for you, and lesser injury kit for you. And we should be fine for now. Okay, we have an update, if I remember correctly. Spell combinations. Improved drain. The victim of vulnerability hex must be wary not only of damage from the elements, but also spell casters who wish to sap life. Okay, we had an update, didn't we? We had an update. Completed quest. The circle of magi. Maybe? Five pages, four mages? You had a first and rather final meeting with the proof... Profiteering, profiteering forger Bahia Juam. Okay, so this guy was the guy that was forging... Right, was selling copies of the same thing to the magi. What is this? Rubble. What? I'm not... There's no reason for you to travel in this direction. Right. Okay. Um, so, what am I supposed to do now? I'm just gonna save it here. Okay, so the question is, I think I need to give Morrigan some offensive spells because uh, she's not doing anything otherwise. Um, let me just, uh, just give me one second here, Morrigan. Train life on this. Uh, right. Disorient if Alistair has been attacked by a melee attack. Okay. And maybe, maybe we just need to do something else here. So maybe we need to go enemy, nearest visible, and just go lightning. Lightning. No, lightning. The caster fires a bolt of lightning at a target, dealing electric electricity damage. Uh, shit. Winter's Grass, the Casper envelops a target in Frost, freezing lower level target solid. Yeah, let's go with that. Winter's Grasp, nearest visible, save. Don't know if it's the right thing to do, we'll test it out and see how we feel about it. Let's continue. Yes, venture forth, please. Okay, we know what that is, so... Redcliffe Village, right? This should be it, and then the castle Look, is there. can we talk for a moment? Whoa. I need to tell you something. I um, should probably have told you earlier. Uh, <laughs> let me guess. You're an idiot. No. What's going on? 
I told you before how Al Eamon raised me, right? That my mother was a serving girl at the castle okay. and he took me in. The reason he did that was because, well, because my father was King Marek. Excuse me? Which made Kaelin my half brother, I suppose. It, um. So you're not just a bastard. You're a royal bastard. So wait a second. But no, he if he's a bastard, he doesn't he doesn't have or does he? Does he have a claim to the throne if he's a bastard? Doesn't that make you heir to the throne? Make his breath, I hope not. I don't think so. You don't think so, do you? I'm a bastard. And, and nobody even knows about I'm me. I'm not really I, sure. I would have told you, but it never really meant anything to me. I was inconvenient, a possible threat to Kaelin's rule, and so they kept me secret. I'd never talked about it to anyone. Everyone who knew either resented me for it or they coddled me. Even Duncan kept me out of the fighting because of it. I didn't want you to know as long as possible. Well, I'm happy Sorry. you told me now, but... Um... Yeah, I think I understand. Oh, good. I'm glad. It's not like I got special treatment for it anyhow. At any rate, that's it. That's <clears throat> what I had to tell you. I thought you should know okay. about it. Okay. Yeah. We can use this to our advantage. No, I'm not gonna. Why? Why tell me then? Why do you need to? Why do I need to know you're the you're the heir to the throne then? Uh, are you sure you're not hiding anything else? <laughs> to me, like, if I ask this question, to me it sounds a little bit like I would be, like, joking a little bit about it. You know, in the way, like, are you sure uh, you're not hiding anything else? But I think in the in this context it, it would be serious and it would be like, are you sure you're not hiding anything else? Or whatever, and I don't want to sound like that. Uh, so you're the heir to the throne then. Let's hope not. I'm the son of a commoner and a Grey Warden to boot. It was made very clear to me early on that there was no room for me raising any rebellions or such nonsense. And that's fine by me. Now, if there's an heir to be found, it's Al Eamon himself. He's not of royal blood, but he is Kaelin's uncle, and more importantly, very popular with the people. Though, if he's really as sick as we've heard... Oh, no, I, I, I don't want to think about that. I really don't. So there you have it. Now can we move on? And I'll just pretend you still think I'm some <laughs> nobody who was too lucky to die with the rest of the Grey Wardens. <laughs> As you command, my prince. That's not really what you think, is it? No, I, I suppose not. I don't feel very lucky at all, to be honest. Okay. Right. Okay, codex updates and stuff like that. Let's have a look here. So, characters, first and foremost. Alistair. Uh, Isolde's suspicious, suspicions were founded, however. Alistair was not Eamon's son, but King Marek's. Eamon sheltered the boy to hide his existence from Queen Rowan, Eamon's sister. Right, okay. Culture and history... Culture and history. Here we go. Redcliffe. King Caelan had Therin, Therin, once famously declared the fate of Redcliffe is the fate of all Ferelden. Certainly the castle is the first and last defense for the sole land route into Ferelden and the country has never fallen to any force that did not first capture Redcliffe. The castle which despite being three times captured is popularly described as unassailable <laughs> also guards one of the largest and most per Pos, uh, prosperous, sorry, towns in Ferelden. Redcliffe Village is well situated near the mountain pass of to Orzammar, and the Orlesian border, and so sir, and so serves as a center of foreign trade. For those reasons, Redcliffe is accounted an Arling, despite the smallest of the domain. The inhabitants of Redcliffe Village are primarily fishermen or merchants who ship dwarven goods through the pass from Orlay to Denerim. Uh, when the entire village smells of smoked fish on certain late autumn mornings, the merchants in their finery do their utmost to pretend otherwise. Right. Cool. Okay. Let us continue then. 
We have Thomas here. I thought I saw travelers coming down the road, though I scarcely believe. Why is that? Have you come to help us? Uh, what do you mean? Is there a problem? So you, you don't know? Has nobody Shit. out there heard? What are you talking about? We're under attack. Monsters come out of the castle every night and attack us oh, until no. dawn. Everyone's been fighting and dying. Apparently everyone seems to agree that a blight is the perfect time to start <clears throat> killing each other. Marvelous, really. We've no army to defend us. No Arl and no king to send us help. So many are dead. And those left are terrified they're next. Hold on, what is this evil that's attacking you? I... I I, I don't rightly know. I'm sorry, nobody does. I should take you to Ban Tegan. He's all that's holding us together. He'll want to see you. Ban Tegan, our Lehman's brother. He's here. Yes. It's not far. If you'll come with yeah, me. Yeah, sure thing. <laughs> it's not like we have a choice, but let's go. Okay, this doesn't look good at all. It's Thomas, yes? And who are these people with you? They are obviously not simple travelers. No, my lord. They just arrived, and I thought you would want to see them. Well done, Thomas. Greetings, friends. My name is Tegan, Ban of Rainosphere, brother to the R. I remember you, Ban Tegan. Though the last time we met, I was a lot younger and covered in mud. Covered in mud? Alistair? It is you, isn't it? You're alive! This is wonderful news! Still alive, yes. Though not for long if Tern Loghain has anything to say about it. Indeed. Loghain would have us believe all Grey Wardens died along with my nephew, amongst other things. Okay, so first thing first, uh, first things first, I just noticed now the, how big um, our sword is. <laughs> it's freaking huge. You can't see it now, but when we, we when we came in, I, I, I could see it. Like, it's, it's a huge sword. Um, wait a second. So, Logan would have us believe all the great one died along with my nephew amongst their things. Y your nephew? I refer to Kaelin, of course. Our sister was Queen Rowan, King Merrick's wife and Kaelin's mother. Make her rest her soul. So, you are a Grey Warden as well? Look, look at Is the it sword, possible man. we've met? You look seem very it. familiar. Is it possible we've met? Well... You may have known my father. Ah, yes, that's it, exactly. A pleasure to meet you, indeed. Though I wish it were under better Me too. circumstances. You're here to see my brother. Unfortunately, that might be a problem. Eamon is gravely ill. No one has heard from the castle in days. No guards patrol the walls, and no one has responded to my shouts. The attack started a few nights ago. Evil things surged from the castle. We drove them back, but many perished during the assault. Okay, so clearly, if your brother is in the castle, something really, really bad is going on there. Um... What evil things are you talking about? Some call them the walking dead, decomposing corpses, returning to life with a hunger for human flesh. They hit again the next night. Each night they come with greater numbers. With Kaelin dead and Loghain starting a war over the throne, no one responds to my urgent calls for help. I have a feeling tonight's assault will be the worst yet. Alistair, I hate to ask, but I desperately need the help of you and your friends. It isn't just up to me. Though the Grey Wardens don't stand much chance against Loghain without Arl Eamon. <sighs> of course we will help. I was just asking for more information. How pointless to help these villagers fight an impossible battle. One would think we had enough to contend with elsewhere. I forgot about Morrigan's attitude. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Attitude. This <laughs> means more to me than you can guess. Thomas, please tell Murdoch what transpired. Then return to your post. Yes, my lord. Now then, there is much to do before night falls. I put two men in charge of the defense outside. Murdoch, the village mayor, is outside the chantry. Sir Perth, one of Eamon's knights, is just up the cliff at the windmill, watching the castle. You may discuss with them the preparations for the coming battle. 
I want to discuss the situation with you first. Of course. So, you have some of Arl Eamon's knights here? I have those few who returned from their quest. You know of this, yes? The search for the urn of sacred ashes? Yes, I question Isolde's decision to send so many knights in search of this relic. But I am a practical man, whereas she is a woman of great faith. Sir Perth was one of the knights sent on this quest. Perhaps you should speak to him if you wish to learn more. Okay, um, why are you in the Chantry with the villagers? Sir Perth insists. He wants me to be with the villagers, so everyone he needs to protect is in one place. I don't mind, to be honest. The point of all this is to protect the villagers, and I can do that best here. This is the last line of defense, should things go amiss. Okay. Should things go amiss? Should the monsters find their way in? I would prefer not to fight in the Chantry, but if they come, then so must it be. We could bring some men in to stand beside me, but I'd rather keep the monsters away from the villagers if okay. possible. Okay. Um, so what happens after this battle is over? Hopefully we can find the source and stop it before it causes any more damage. With luck, we'll also find Eamon and be able to help him. What exactly are these things that attack the village? I do not know. They seem to be okay. walking corpses. Men with rotting flesh that continue to attack even with the we, gravest okay. injuries. Undead, yeah, probably. Perhaps. Zombies. Spirits possessing the bodies of the dead. We could be dealing with a mage, but who would do with such a, a thing? Hmm. Okay. Very well. Luck be with Thank you, you my friend. Right. Okay. Jesus. Oh my god, Morrigan again. Minus five, really? Maybe, I don't, I don't know. Right, Redcliffe, a village under siege. Prepare uh, Redcliffe for the attack. Bantigan has directed you to Sir Perth, who leads the Knights of the Redcliffe, and Murdoch, the mayor, who is in charge of the militia. Perth and Murdoch will know what Redcliffe needs to be prepared for nightfall. Talk to them, all right. And then the Blight here. Um, Alistair thinks that you should seek the help of Arl Eamon of Redcliffe, a highly respected noble who has a great deal of influence in the Landsmeet. You have traveled to Redcliffe only to discover that the village is suffering nightly attacks from the walking dead and that Castle Redcliffe is locked shut, showing no signs of life or activity. Right. Why is this still... Come on. Anyway. Codex. Alisa is old. Uh, the Arling of Redcliffe was a source of constant trouble for Emperor Reveal during the occupation. It was rumored that since each new report sent to the Emperor in sent the Emperor into a fit of violent rage, his court had taken to poisoning message messengers before they could deliver their accounts. Isolde's family was the tenth to be given the different difficult task of governing Redcliffe, and since most of the Previous Arls had either been murdered by their bands or beheaded by the Emperor. They did not approach the job with a great deal of enthusiasm. Isolde met Eamon not realizing she was the rightful heir to her father's domain and quickly became smitten with him for being part of the resistance. Never mind that it was her family he was resisting. Perhaps a bit too romantic for her own good, she insisted, insisted upon staying behind with Eamon when the rest of the family was driven out. Right. Okay. Let us pray. Blessed art thou who exists in the Maker's sight. Blessed art thou who seeks his forgiveness. Blessed art thou who seeks his well, return. Blessed is the prophetess, his daughter, they're, sacrificed to the holy flame. They're gone. May the chant reach the Maker's ear gone on and a tell long him trip. of our contrition. When will they be back? I miss them. Be brave, young man. Your parents would want that. We need you here to protect the rest of us. Hmm. Yes? I guess I can do that. There's a good lad. In the morning, we'll look for your parents. In the morning. Right, okay. Mother Hannah. You are a stranger amongst us, yet you still agree to defend our village in its darkest hour. We are most grateful to you. Hmm... I cannot stand by while monsters attack the helpless. Not many in these modern days would honestly say the same. You are a man of worth, and the Maker will smile upon you. 
Allow me to introduce myself. I am revered Mother Hannah, head of this chantry, nice to meet you. which for the moment is a place of refuge for these poor villagers. Surely this cannot be the entire village. These few are all who are left. All those who cannot defend themselves, yes. They are terrified of tonight's attack, and I fear these walls will not keep them safe. What can I do to help with your task? Just how safe is the Chantry? It is the sturdiest building in the village. The women, elderly and children will stay here during the battle, while the militia and knights protect them. They set up a barricade outside the Chantry to keep monsters from getting inside. If anything gets in, Van Tegan is our only defense. Please, have mercy. Help these people. Do whatever you can. Okay, I would like your blessing, mother. Of course, child. Blessed art thou who exists in the Maker's sight. Blessed art thou who seeks his forgiveness. Blessed <laughs> art thou who again. seeks his return. Blessed is the prophetess, his daughter, sacrificed to the holy flame. May the chant reach the Maker's ears and tell him of our contrition. I find it very strange, I mean, very strange, it's it's pretty hard to manage a party with Morrigan in from a, an approval perspective, right? Because everything that everybody else approves uh, about, Morrigan is just going to be disapproval, uh, it's going to get gain the disapproval from Morrigan, right? So... I'm scared, mother. When are the bad men coming? Soon, darling. Don't worry. Everything will be alright. I want to go home. Where is father? Why can't we go home? I already told you. Father is outside defending the village from the bad men. We must stay here and be brave. Can you do that? I... I guess so. Demonic possession. New codex entry. Okay, we have two codex entries. Magic and religion here. So let's go with the first one here. The founding of the Chantry. Cordelius Dracon, king of the city-state of Orle was a man of uncommon ambition. In the year minus 15 ancient, the young king began construction of a great temple dedicated to the Maker and declared that by its, comple by its completion, he would not only have united the wearing city-states of the south, he would have brought Andrastian belief to the, wor to the world. In minus 3 ancient, the temple was completed. There, in its heart, Dracon Dracon, that's an interesting name, uh, knelt before the eternal flame of Andraste and was crowned ruler of the Empire of Orle. His first act as emperor to declare the Chantry as the established Andras Andrastian religion of the Empire. It took three years and several hundred votes before Olisa of Montsimarad was elected to lead the new Chantry. Upon her coronation as divine, she took the name Justinia in honor of the dis uh, disciple who recorded Andraste's songs. In that moment, the ancient era ended and the divine age began. Right. Demonic possession. Why do demons seek to possess the living? History claims that they are malevolent spirits, the first children of the Maker, angry at their creator for turning from them and jealous of those creations he considered superior. They stare across the veil at the living and do not understand what they see. Yet they know they crave it. They desire life. They pull the living across the veil when they sleep and prey on their psyche with nightmares. Whenever they can, they cross the veil into our world to possess it outright. We know that any demon will seek to possess a mage and upon doing so will create an abomination. Most of the world does not know, however, that the strength of an abomination depends entirely on the power of the demon that possesses the mage. This is true, in fact, of all possessed creatures. One demon is not the same as any other. Demons can, for instance, be classified enchanter classified, sorry. Enchanter Bram's categorization of demons into that portion of the psyche they primarily prey upon has held since the Tower Age. 
According to Bram, the weakest and most common of demons are those of rage. They are the last intelligent, the least intelligent and most prone to violent outbursts against anything living. They expend their energies quickly, the most powerful of them exhibiting great strength and occasionally the ability to generate fire. Next are the demons of hunger. In a living host, they become cannibals and vampires and within the dead, they feed upon the living. Theirs are the powers of draining both of life life force and of mana. Next are the demons of sloth, the first on Bram's, uh, on Bram's scale that are capable of true intelligence. In its true form, this demon is known as a shade, a thing which is nearly indistinct and invisible for such is sloth's nature. It hides and stalks unaware and when confronted it shows fatigue and apathy. Demons of desire are amongst the most powerful and rare Sorry, and are the ones most likely to seek out the living and actively trick them into a deal. These demons will exploit anything that can be coveted, wealth, power, lust, and they will always end up getting far more than they give. A desired demon's province is that of illusions and mind control. Strongest of all demons are those of pride. Those are the most feared creatures to lose upon the world. Masters of magic and in possession of vast intellect, they are the true schemers. It is they who seek most strongly to possess mages and will bring their de uh, sorry will bring other demons across the veil in numbers to achieve their own ends. Although what that might be has never been discovered, a greater pride demon brought across the veil would threaten the entire world. Right? Okay. Well, we kind of met all of these guys, so all of these. Monster types, demon types. Book, what is this? It is begun. Theta's calendar. What? Okay. Theta's calendar. For most good folk, the details of our calendar have little purpose. It is useful only for telling them when the summer day festival will be held, when the snows are expected to begin, and when the harvest must be complete. The naming of the years are a matter of are a matter for historians and taxmen, and few is pressed. And few, if pressed, could even tell you the reason that our current age is named after dragons. It is 930 Dragon Age, the 30th year of the 9th age since the crowning of the Chantry's first divine. Oh, okay, so that's a good explanation. So the 30th year of the 9th age since the crowning of the Chantry's divine. Each age is exactly 100 years, so it's been... Okay, so it's been 930 years. Gotcha. With the next age's name chosen in the 99th year, the scholars of Val Royo advise the chantry of portents seen in that 99th year, and the chantry, uh, sorry, and chantry authorities pour over the research for months before the divine announces the name of the imminent age. The name is said to be an omen of what is to come and what the people of Thedas will face for the next hundred years. The current age was not meant to be the Dragon Age. Throughout the last months of the Blessed Age, the Chantry was preparing to declare the Sun Age, named for the symbol of the Orlesian Empire, which, at that time, sprawled over much of the south of Thedas and controlled both Ferelden and what is now Navarra. Navarra. It was to be a celebration of Orlesian Imperial glory. But as the rebellion in Ferelden reached the head... Uh, and the Battle of River Dane was about to begin, a peculiar event occurred. A rampage, the rising of a dreaded high dragon. Dragons had been thought practically extinct since the days of the Navaran dragon hunts, and they say that to see this great beast rise from the frostbacks was both majestic and terrifying. As the rampage began, and the high dragon decimated the countryside in its search for food, the elderly divine Faustine II abruptly declared the Dragon Age. Some say the divine was declaring support for Orle in the battle against Ferelden, since the dragon is an element of the Dufael family he uh, heraldry of King Megran, the so-called usurper king of Ferelden. But that, as it may, be that as it may, the high dragon's rampage turned towards the Orlesian side of the Frostback Mountains, killing hundreds and sending thousands more fleeing to the northern coast. The Ferelden rebels won the Battle of River Dane, ultimately securing their independence. Many thus think that the Dragon Age will come to represent a time of violent and dramatic change for all, the, for all of Thedas. It remains to be seen. That's cool. That is actually very cool. Nice, okay. 
Okay, Jitta. You're a Grey Warden, right? Were you in Ostagar? In the Kokari Wilds? My husband and son went there to bring the Chant of Light oh, to the Chasen. Yes. But I haven't heard from them since. <sighs> yeah, okay, I remember you. I've I heard am. of you, I mean. Yes, You've heard of me? your husband and son are both dead, unfortunately. I... I thought that might be the case. Thank you for telling me. I'm sorry. Me. Make his blessings upon you. Damn. Okay. Right. Uh, Irenia? Good day. Never mind. We, we might talk to you again soon, probably. I'm so Whoa. scared, Father. What are we going to do? Silence, girl. Do you want the children to hear you? But night is coming. The monsters will return and we sit here and wait for them. We have no choice. We must pray and hope for the Maker's compassion. I just hope everything will be all right. So many have already died. Yeah, okay. Now, what, what is this here? Sorry, am I bothering you? I'll, I'll try to be more quiet. Um, are you alright? Why are you crying? Those, those things dragged my mother away. I don't know what happened to her, but I hear her screaming all the time, everywhere. And now my brother Bevan, he, he ran off. I, I don't know where he is. I'm so scared they got him too. Hmm. What would you give to find him? What? Why would he run off, do you know? He said something about saving mother. He's just a little boy. He doesn't understand she's gone. Grief can make us do many things that don't make any sense, I'm afraid. If he has foolishly run off, then he is no doubt dead. You should get Morrigan. used to that. Morrigan. Nice. Maybe you want to kick her in the head <laughs> while you're at it. Shall we comfort her with lies? If she is to face death, better she face it honestly. I hope he didn't try to go to the castle. Oh, that would be awful. Have you tried looking for him? I went to her house. It's by the square. He wasn't there. I searched the rest of the village too. I called and I called, but he never answered. I, I wonder if he ran off into the woods. I'm so worried. Without me, he has nobody. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll look for him. You will? Thank you so much. Please find him. Right, a missing child. A missing child, Caitlin, a young woman who lives in Redcliffe, is afraid of her for her brother Bevin. Their mother was dragged off by the creatures from the castle and now Bevin has run off. Caitlin doesn't know where he is and she has failed to find him. You told Caitlin you would search for Bevin. Yeah, we would. Um... Is there something in here? No, I don't think so. That's it. Okay, cool. Right. So, let's uh, let me have a look here. Well, okay, this is a pretty big area here. We can uh, go into Caitlin's home, the chantry. That's where we came out of the tavern. Uh, Murdoch is the village under siege, and then the world map is there. Right. Okay, cool. Well, I'm gonna cut this episode here for now. We'll uh, continue our adventure in the next one. We'll go speak to everyone and get ready for the night uh, for the imminent attack. Um, cool. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below, guys. Thank you very much for all your support, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.